Today's hearing is a solemn one. It involves freedom of conscience. Ultimately, without the first pillar of our freedoms, the freedoms that we did not give up to our government, the American democracy and the experiment that has lasted over 200 years falls for no purpose. The architects of our Constitution believed our country would be a place that would accommodate all religions. In fact, they could not agree on religion more than anything else. Our Founding Fathers came from different religions, and they did not trust that one religious order would not circumvent another. For, in fact, many came from a country in which they were of one religion and had to change to another on a government edict. Many look at establishment of religion as all it is about. But ultimately, our Founding Fathers, including Thomas Jefferson, including George Washington and others, all understood that, in fact, their conscience was their guide and their conscience came, conscience came overwhelmingly from their religious convictions. And therefore, time and time again, they made it clear that a man's conscience, particularly if it flowed from his faith, had a special role in our freedoms. I might note, not for a subject that many would bring up today, but that, in fact, since our founding, men primarily, and now men and women, can refuse to serve under arms for reasons of personal conviction stemming from their faith. There is no greater obligation than to serve your country in time of war. But in fact, our country, for hundreds of years, has understood that faith comes first, and that no man or woman should ever be forced to betray that faith. Many will frame today, not as First Amendment, but about the particular issue that comes before us uh, related to the Obama health care plan. This is not about that. In fact, if it is about that, we should be over in the Energy and Commerce Committee or some committee dealing with health or other issues. This committee wants to fully vet with the most knowledgeable of both clergy and lay people that we could find the real questions of where does faith begin and where does it end? Where does government's ability to influence decisions made by people of faith and where does it end? These basic questions go to the heart of the Constitution. I recognize that there will be people who do not like the outcome of any decision involving the Constitution, whether it is the Miranda warning related to self-incrimination, whether it is, in fact, the free, a free press able to denounce people in government or others, whether it is one after another of the Bill of Rights or other items uh, so entrenched in the Constitution, many of them are objectionable to others. But let us understand, inalienable rights flow from all of us, whether we are in the majority or an incredibly small minority. That ultimately is what we are going to discuss today. I expect that we will hear from people who have spent their entire life pondering these very questions of faith and conscience. I expect we will meet in the second panel, particularly from people who must, must execute both faith and often education and other responsibilities that have fallen to church and church-like groups since our founding. I take this as very solemn. I know that all of us on the panel do. The tone today is about learning and listening, and I certainly hope all of us who came here, including the students uh, who are in the audience today, recognize how important this juncture in our democracy is. And with that, I recognize the ranking member for his opening statement.